Hey everyone, and welcome back to another Movie Mates video. I am Matthew, of course, joined by my wonderful host and best friend. Cool. Hey man, great to see you. So today, we're concluding another arc in the channel, and that is our review of Loki, the miniseries. Um, all six episodes have now released on Disney+, Plus, and today we are back to review the sixth and final episode, um, which I'm really excited to talk to you about, because this has you know, a lot of big implications um, for, for the universe, as we had thought. And I think it's going to be um, sort of a more detailed discussion for, for other projects as well. Um, so I'm going to pass over to Cal to explain what the show has been building up to, what this episode's about, and the breakdown of our discussion. Um, so yeah, off to you, Cal. So since episode three, we've known the people amongst the TVA are actually variants. And since then, we've wondered what are the actual intentions of the timekeepers. And since the discovery that the timekeepers are actually not responsible for the TVA, We've had the question of who's behind it and we finally get that today and if you have not seen the episode uh turn off because we will be talking deep spoilers and uh the future of the mcu so if, if you haven't seen it go go ahead and watch it come back uh you know so, so you get the, the full understanding of the analysis but you know we see a development uh between the the weird uh incest relationship uh that makes me real uncomfortable uh you know too too far a development in this episode i'd say uh and you know some, some things happen uh, that maybe question whether they even have a future together. Yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a huge episode <laughs> as, as, as all these sort of Disney Plus finales are. Um, so it's going to be a good, good discussion. Um, just before we um, begin the spoiler review, please be sure to like, subscribe and comment your thoughts on Loki down below. We'd love to hear them. And of course, our time codes, email and iTunes link is in the description below as well. Um, I'm just conscious if I'm a bit laggy here, mate. Um, hopefully it's a little bit better now. I know it is quite laggy. Um, yeah, so, you're, uh, you're always good on audio, really. Yeah, that's good. That's the main thing. At the very least. Um, I mean, yeah, mate. So if you want to open the floor with your notes. Well, you know, I think an important thing to talk about is the idea of twists, especially with the MCU. Uh, you know, in, in every uh, sort of medium, you know, you have four types of twists, really. Obvious good obvious bad not obvious good not obvious good not obvious bad you know so we've had we've had pr pretty much the the broad spectrum i think uh in all of the mcu and you know in mo movies in general uh you know the power broker i suppose depends how you see it you know definitely obvious was it good or bad i suppose that's open to interpretation i guess within the context it, it was fine right you know Sh sharon carter being the power broker made, made sense uh agatha harkness be, being the villain of wandavision being a villain, obvious good. Being the principal villain, obvious bad. Uh, you know, I, you know. So here, yeah. the obvious bad was the the person responsible was a Loki. Uh, the obvious good responsible being Kang. So I had fully braced myself for the villain to be a Loki, and I, you know, I was very prepared. But it it didn't mean that I wouldn't be like mourning the wasted potential uh, of this answer. You know, Kevin Feige likes to keep things simple. I definitely thought it was going to be a Loki. You know, there'd been so many clues to Kang. You know, there were constant legitimate clues. Uh, but, you know, we had that with Mephisto and people think that was an unreasonable assumption. But, you know, the entire thing was principally based on, you know, the birth of her twins, which, you know, Mephisto is an integral character to their origin story. You know, as integral as it seems Kang is to the creation of the TVA. Yeah, so like I do think with these Disney Plus shows, because they're so short as well, like it's important that the twists that they do have, that they execute them right. And I think we had both mm -hmm. sort of said all off camera here that it was, we were kind of glad that it was, ended up being Kang, that was, or the He Who Remains, um, as the characters uh, called, that was behind the TVA. But maybe the execution of it and the way the character was sort of developed and and sort of portrayed wasn't for us um i sort of said to you before we kind of before we started recording that i was kind of a bit sick of the mcu trope of building this really um you know um intimidating antagonists sort of like your ultrons but then using them for laughs and um it's not that um the performance was bad i think the performance is really good it's just that i th i really wanted that more menacing figure who um who is to be feared rather than someone who's like cracking jokes and he's actually more of an anti-hero uh, as he as he himself explains which i find was quite interesting how did you feel yeah i mean yeah i i guess it's you know how you look at it from his perspective he's preventing multiversal war but it's variants of him uh the, the, that are causing it so you know you know, it's 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 sort of a you know a, a certain way to weigh it up, I guess. 
Uh, but yeah, I was I was definitely in agreement with you you there. You know, it's absolutely the right answer, and I think it being Kang is the only answer the the fans would have accepted. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were we were holding out hope that that that, that would be the answer, and we thankfully got it. Uh, I did not like this version of Kang at all, but you know, I'm I'm optimistic because you know that character ends up dying, uh, and you know we're introduced to the idea of you know the MCU multiverse, and that you know there'll be numerous variants. So the version that we see in Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantumania, and you know the version that we see in probably future MC, MCU event films won't be this version, and will hopefully maybe maybe have a bit more menace, menace uh, you know, as opposed to this version. But you know, it was just it was just a an interesting introduction just you know in a in a purple robe chomping on an apple you know it was yeah. it was not what i expected you know when when the when the lift doors opened i was i was thinking okay it's going to be a loki and then i said to you i, I don't even really I, I don't know what jonathan majors looks like so i was like is that jonathan majors yeah i i guess so you know uh, yeah. cuz you know they they never objectively say his name and i didn't want to google anything during the episode so it wasn't until he referred to himself as a conqueror that i was like okay you know that that sort of uh 100 percented it for me yeah i agree and it's strange because for a loki tv show the final episode barely features him really and um, to be honest it is more of like a you know that introduction to kang which i think is important if you're going to have him return for future projects in the mcu and um, you know what i mean um one one aspect of this episode i actually really enjoyed was kind of the the poetic irony of of loki being the one that was betrayed here um, as you know, he and Sylvie sort of turn that platonic relationship into a romantic one with a, a, a kiss that I'm sure will break down. Um, but yeah, she sort of betray, well, betrays him and well, maybe betrayal is a bit ha- harsh, but she kind of, you know, um, uh, you know, pushes him aside and, and uh, executes her plan um, to kill, to kill Kang. And um, what was your just, what was your just thoughts on that sort of dynamic and on the ultimate sort of, ending of that relationship so to speak hmm, i mean I, I would have liked that it happened before they had a chance to kiss each other uh that that, that, that <laughs> yeah. would have made me feel happier uh you know i i didn't think that sylvie was going to make it out of this show alive but seeming as you know the the tva arc is not over uh, as evidenced by, by the last scene of the episode you know we're we're obviously not done with any of these characters so i i didn't think she was going to make it out of this alive but, you know, she still may well not make it out of this story alive because it is really, you know, one story told over multiple seasons, it appears, because the only answer we get is who's behind the TVA, but that kind of changes nothing. You know, it's just an answer. You know, it, they, they haven't stopped the TVA. They haven't, you know, learned anything beyond who was responsible, which, I mean, you, 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 you would think you'd have a bit, a bit more after a full season. Yeah, there's still a lot of unanswered questions there, mate. You're right, and... Um, I'm sort of I'm glad my lagginess has sort of ended now, uh, thankfully. Um, and yeah, yeah, there's a lot of unanswered questions there, mate. And one one thing I was kind of conscious of as well is that this isn't the last time you'll probably be seeing us review Loki on the channel because, of course, season two is in the works. Um, and I think that that's a good thing because this show is, you know, on a whole, I think it's my favorite Disney Plus show, um, MCU wise anyway. Um, I think it's the strongest one. I think episode by episode. You know, it's it's consistent, it's adventurous, it's fun, it takes risks, and I'm just really excited to see where it goes next. The only thing I was a little bit disappointed with was the lack of screen time Owen Wilson's character gets here, as uh, as Mobius is probably my favourite in the show. Um, and, and with that, I suppose, there is sort of an un- unanswered question in my head as to why he uh, doesn't really remember Loki, or just or maybe can't recall him. I, I suppose that's maybe a different a change in the timeline or something. Or do you have any answers to that? that I'm just unaware of. Yeah, I mean, it it, it is it is clearly that you know uh, the the ent- the entire place has either been reset by the change in time or physically reset. You know, just as the variants were whenever they were recruited to become agents. So I mean. You know, e- either the memories have been wiped or they have actually lived a different life because of the, the change in time. But then that would, again, bet- betray the rules that, that were set up in Avengers Endgame. But, you know, I think I think the show does enough of that for that to not be unexpected. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And do you think with season two of the show, do you think they'll go back to this sort of story arc? Or do you think they're going to try something new? Because I'd sort of be happy with either. You know what I mean? If, if anything, I'd be happier if they just continue down this route because we know what it is and we know what's good 
rather than take a risk with something that might not pay off the same. Um, Because I think there's a lot of unanswered questions I could definitely answer and explore more in the universe. You know, I'd I'd like to see Mobius before all this took place, you know, with human life and Mm -hmm. stuff like that. Where do you think it's going to go? Yeah, I find it a bit like a a bit more annoying than I do, uh, you know, interesting. You know, I'm I'm sure when a lot of people saw saw you know that that final scene where uh you know where, where loki is now like a stranger to mobius they they were kind of like oh damn you know what, what what a moment but i was really just like oh well i mean you've just like burnt down all of the development that, that you've had throughout mm. all the episodes you know yeah I so i mean that. now they're just gonna have to waste season two time building that back up because i mean you can't have them just not be friends anymore you know you have to return it to the status quo because that's i think what a lot of people are watching the show for uh so yeah, yeah. I, I i think we'll, we'll have to see that that relationship rebuild obviously now kang the conqueror uh you know that character from the comics rather than just this sort of more more benevolent version of kang you know potentially an adaptation of Amortis or you know just a, a variant that we, that we haven't seen in the comics uh you know because the, there is a character of you know uh he who remains but you know the, this more of an, a, an amalgam situation you know so yeah we're, we're, we're absolutely going to see that we need those answers and I guess Jonathan Majors, I don't see how you can't make him, you know, like a like a main character of this show now. You know, he he has to be part of the principal cast, I think. You know, if you're having characters consult who who's responsible for the TVA, you know, like like Rensselaer did with the with the timekeepers, you know, if he was responsible for all that, and now this as the statue suggests, it's no knowledge that he's responsible, surely, you know, the the communication would have to be seen on screen. Yeah, definitely, mate, definitely. Yeah, I'd, I'd be intrigued to see more of him as well. And with that, you know, uh, I think the, when we, the, one of the few things I'd be critical of this episode is that, you know, if I didn't sort of, if I didn't know Kang in the comics or if I was unaware of the character, the, the villain explanation is actually really poor because um, they, they don't really give him a title or anything. And the only yeah. reason I would sort of know who he is is because I watch it with subtitles and the subtitles is call him He He Remains. So I think mm-hmm. the villain explanation is really poor because he, for the most part, if you're not a fan of the comics, he remains anonymous. Um, you know what I mean? So it's I think that's a bit silly. And also a lot of the episode is just, uh, there's a really sort of outright exposition scene um, that's sort of done. I know they have mm-hmm. to do that, but... You know, I think the episode could have, I, I think they could have taken a risk and made the episode like half an hour longer, to be honest with you, because I, I, it went in really quickly, but still too much time's wasted just chatting rather than getting into actually, you know, plot stuff, the narrative. So um, I get they had to do that, but, you know, it, it, it felt like there was another episode after this rather than this being the finale, if that makes sense. Yeah, you know, I, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the, the episode does sort of come to a close when, Sylvie kills the, this version of Kang, uh, you know, in, in whatever name he has, you know, he who remains, but I suppose, you know, in general, he's just Nathaniel Richards, uh, you know, so I suppose I'm just wondering how, how do they clean up the mess? Because, you know, now we, we've gone from the sacred timeline to now sort of an exponential infinite amount of branch timelines. Uh, and we, we, we talked about this, uh, you know, uh, right, right after the show aired, you know, what their interpretation of the multiverse is. And it seems to be that, you know, they're still sticking with them being branches of the sacred timeline. So I, I said to you, it might just be that, you know, universes like Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi's Spider-Verse, uh, you know, Mark Webb's Spider-Verse, that, you know, they are variations of this timeline. It's just that the variation happened, you know, at the beginning of time or at the time of the dinosaurs, which is, you know, the, the reason why the entire universe looks different, you know, rather than one person looking different. You know, it's not, oh, everything's the same, but you know, Tom Hiddleston looks like Sophia DiMartino. Mm. It's every yeah. single thing in the universe except J.K. Simmons looks different. Yeah, pretty much, mate. Like, I think it doesn't necessarily close the door on that possibility, which excites me. Um, and, and with that, I suppose, with Loki confirmed to appear in Doctor Strange 2, um, you know, I'm definitely intrigued to see how that develops. Um, I just don't want the, sh- the, you know, I just don't want, um, you know, the show to be neglected in the sense that, you know, the movies continue on the story. I think there's a lot, a lot of characters in here that deserve to have their story story told, like Mobius and Renslayer. Renslayer is a funny one because you, you kind of get the feeling that there's something more at play there. Because I know her and Kang have kind of this sort of romantic relationship in the comics, even though the characters are very different in the show. So uh, I think that's very um, intriguing. But with that, I do think it's obviously it's got to play into the multiverse names. You, you know, it, ha- it has to, which is. 
which is kind of I, I kind of have to eat my words here because uh, you know I was quite critical of these Disney Plus shows um not having sort of universe altering plot lines but here they've kind of just I have to just you know bite my tongue and say I was wrong because they do here you know which which does surprise me given that you know it's not exactly um you know it's not exactly the mass audience that they would have had with a blockbuster film if you if you get me um mm-hmm. so you know fair play I, I didn't really expect that and um you know I, I was wrong so yeah yeah I mean I, I just think they're making you know the job so much harder for themselves you know they're they're having to explain branch timelines being the cause of the multiverse rather than just you know interdimensional travel I feel like that that's so much easier you know where we're gonna be I presume you know everybody's gonna be comparing Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness with Flashpoint or the Flash or whatever whatever the movie ends up being called you know because the Flash involves the Flash traveling to multiple different Earths including uh, Tim Burton's Batman so I mean you know they're 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 definitely going to be compared you know timelines versus alternate universe and i just think that the alter, the alternate universe interdimensional travel is is so much more streamlined a description uh you know i i, I think the description of how how that can conceivably happen is pithier yeah they've certainly sort of put themselves in a corner and they've, they've made it hard for themselves to be fair but luckily the mc has a lot of talented writers who love the comic book lore of it and and you know, fingers crossed, they can they can make the most of that. Um, but yeah, I think you're. Right. I think there's easier ways to go about it, than rather confuse it with branch timelines and and the like. But hey, they know what they're doing. I guess you know the show is done incredibly well, and um, I absolutely loved it, mate. It was a great journey. I'm kind of glad it's. I'm sorry, God, I was kind of sad it's over to be honest with you, um, because you know you, even though it was only six episodes, um. I don't know. I, I I would have loved to see another six more to be honest with you. I think it was that good. Really surprised me, mate. Um, to be honest. Um, and as I say, I, I think it's my favorite MCU, um, Disney Plus show anyway. Maybe not you know mm-hmm. show in general because I do prefer your Daredevils and stuff. And but um, this is definitely right up there, right up there. Yeah, you know, I I do think I prefer uh the mini series to multiple seasons. Uh, you know, because one division, even though you were like, oh, there's a missed opportunity there, or oh, I wish you had done this instead, there's no unanswered questions. You don't go, well, why did this happen? You just say they should have done that. You know, not mm. not questioning uh, why they did it because a- everything there made sense. It was a, you know, it was a complete plot, complete arc done. Yeah. Uh, you know, and fucking Winter Soldier, the show is done, but you know, we'll we'll obviously see Sam and presumably Bucky and Captain America four. But you know, here, you know, it just leaves you question pondering and you know wondering yeah. mm-hmm. if you know they, they probably could have you know done two or three more episodes and completed the tba storyline because i mean you know i think i think if that had been hit with his death that was the end of the tba but it released all the kangs and then that you know has has the connotations for the rest of the mcu but the show is over i think that yeah. that could have worked yeah i think you're right bud you know i i do feel like with the other mcu shows certainly disney plus ones anyway they have more of a definitive ending where as you say there's no real questions left unanswered, but just sort of disappointment or things that would have done differently. Whereas here, it's it's kind of the opposite, whereas like you do feel excited for the future, but at the same time, you've got a lot of questions there that you feel like you could have been answered in another couple episodes. You know, whereas WandaVision was, you know, um, how many episodes, nine or 10 or something? Um, I, 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 feel like, I feel like this could have been easily that long or longer, to be honest. Um, which, you know, it's weird because I think these episodes are 40, about 40 minutes give or take um and you know it's not as if it has like a really long finale or anything it, it's just a standard sort of 40 40 ish 45 minute episode so um and two of the episodes take you away from the from the main plot well well, that, well that's it i mean it's really curious to me that like every episode feels like you know a rick and morty style adventure a doctor who style adventure and that's part of the reason why i love it so much this one a bit less because it was where this one kind of kind of felt to me like a, a boss level of a video game kind of thing um, you know, the two main characters finally get to, to face off against the big bad. And, you know, I, I don't know if it's an anticlimax or anything, but it's certainly not what anyone expected. And um, I, I think this is, this, I think my feelings could change over time, depending on how the MCU resolves this sort of plot line in, in future projects. So um, here's hoping the you know, season two um, is, is as good as this, because if it is, it'll be one of the MCU's best projects, I think. Yeah, they really need to work on, you know, a twist that, you know, 
I mean, I guess, I guess yeah, it, I it, it's mean. a balance where it's a balance where nobody's going to be happy because you know if you know if Kevin Feige deviates too much from the comics, uh, then you know pe- people will question that as as we've seen with recent uh, events. Uh, but then you know if he sticks too close to the comics, things are predictable, and then people yeah. are like, oh well, you 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 could have done a less obvious twist. You know, I I yeah. guess the you know I get I get I guess the answer is no twist at all. But then where's the intrigue? Uh, then, then you're kind of just plodding along, and everything happens as you expect to. So, I mean, I, I understand there's no winning. So, I, I, w- I wouldn't suggest that you do anything differently. It's just k- case by case that, that there's going to yeah. be criticism from from one side or the other. Yeah, and like like I, like I said, you know, in the last couple of Loki episodes, you know, comic book fans are hard ones to please, and when they, what to be fair though, when they are placed, you know, it, it's usually really you know really please you know what i mean you know comic book fans will sort of they are the most supportive fans but also the hardest to, to you know appease and and stuff all the time so it's a tricky one but i think that's why the the mcu is so successful is because generally it, it does things for the fans and it does it really well and you know when 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 they do something bad like the fans aren't afraid to let them know um which i think is always helpful you know what I mean? And that, that's how you improve. And, and I definitely think they are doing that with each Disney Plus show. I do think they're, everyone's been better than the last. And it's not as if One Division was bad. You know, I, I still really like that one. It's just that the other two have just been better and better. Um, so I'm not sure what the next one after this is. Um, it must be, you know... Uh, it's what she- if. What Coming if? Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. you no, know, that, that's really exciting because I think that's the most different project yet. Obviously, it's animated, so every episode mm-hmm. is going to be different and i'm really excited for that and it's um, also uh it's it's been confirmed like within the last day uh or the last day or two that uh that that's actually presenting branches that were created by the by the finale of loki rather than yeah being, i heard that you know set set entirely away from the mcu so mm-hmm. then that that sort of opens the door maybe in the future for uh jeffrey wright who's doing the voice of uh i think it's awatu the the watcher uh you know that 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 you know opens up uh, a, a big door for him to play that character in live action yeah absolutely me absolutely i think it'll be really exciting i'm really excited for the for that show as well i'm not sure how many episodes that is or you know wh- whether it's multiple stories in one episode or not but i'm you know i'm really intrigued do you know anything about it yeah i imagine it's i imagine it's a separate story per episode probably 10 or 12 i wonder i wonder if it's weekly i, I imagine it would have to be to fill uh you know the, the gaps because after that it's hawk after after it, it's miss marvel and then it's hawkeye uh running running out the year i'm looking forward to it i i don't love the animation style but, but i'm sure i'll settle into it mm. uh the, the guy they've got to voice tony stark i think mm, you know yeah interesting choice uh that, that, that's all i'll say like surely someone can do do, do, do you think there's some kind of legal issue with someone who can just perfectly mimic robert Downey jr like do you think he has like the copyright to his own voice yeah that would be interesting because i would absolutely love if all if the what if show you sort of that the voices from our childhood in terms of you know animated you know bring back you know you know the the voice i think the voice actors from avengers earth's mightiest heroes absolutely smashed it like they absolutely nailed that um, I'd love to see a Christopher Daniel Barnes appearance in the MCU, be it you know a Spider Verse or an animated tale or something, or Josh Keaton or anything like that. I think that would be absolutely amazing. In terms of like, I'd imagine you know some of those big big actors have ridiculous things in their contract, like you know you can't have a hundred percent you know um, likely you know voice thing. You know what I mean? They can't have someone in, intimidating or like a you know, you know um, impersonating me or something in the contract, you know, there's bound to be something like, weird. Can Robert Downey Jr. really not carve out one afternoon? You know, like, the, you know, the, does he really have to have someone else, you know, yeah. make potentially the last appearance of his Iron Man on his behalf? I know, I know. Like, um, it's going to be really sad as well with Chadwick Boseman because I think this is the last sort of his, I don't, I'm not sure if it's last ever performance or something, but it's certainly... I think um, it is. Uh, yeah, it's certainly one up there, like so. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be quite sad, but you know what? It's yeah. I don't know if there's any other big MCU actors doing voice. I don't. I'm not sure if Hilly Atwell's doing Agent or Agent Carter. I know it's, she's not uh, Agent Carter, but she's like Captain Carter or something. 
Yeah, I think it's it's pretty much everyone aside from just a couple of people. Uh, I think it's Chris Evans is, isn't reprising his role. Uh, RDJ isn't. Brie Larson isn't. Uh, and then there were just a, an, an, another few. I f- either Chris Hemsworth, I was going to say either Chris Hemsworth is or he isn't, but that's the case for everyone. Uh, but, you know, it was news either way, you know, yeah. but, but but I don't remember. Yeah, someone had, so I had, I had heard something about like Chris Hemsworth did a voice role in as either like Throg or Alligator Loki or something. What was that about? Yeah, it was, it was Throg, yeah. Throg, yeah. But like, I, 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 look, I looked back and I rewatched the scene and it's literally just, ugh. <laughs> uh, I was like, really? You 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 wasted you wasted in an afternoon of this man's time. Madness, madness, mate. Um, I'm sure there's some archive footage that, that would have lined up. Bound to be. You're bound to be, mate. Um, any more points in the finale from you, mate? Well, you know, as as I said about season one, uh, I was I was on a Facebook group where where people were sort of uh pooping on the idea of people criticizing uh you know a TV show for not having a conclusive ending uh, at at the end of a season. But like, I think you I think you've got you know you have to have some overhanging threads to increase interest but i think overhanging characters are enough you know uh i've, I've had issues recently with uh with, with tv and i guess maybe it is a level of selfishness with with streaming you know where, where you get the answers immediately uh but you know I, I i don't need the answer to every question immediately but I'd, I'd say you need most answers to that season's big questions here we got one big answer uh to you know maybe three or four questions uh and you know with, with the rest to be answered and more to be uh you know m- more more to be uh suggested next season and i, I you know the, the, there are positives and negatives you know either you look at it as essentially it's two parts of one season with just a big with just a big mid-season break or or you could be you know annoyed at the fact that you know you're, you're not getting your answers for a long time it's just weird that we're probably going to be seeing you know multiple kangs before we even see you know season two of this show with probably a different kang you know it seems that we're we're seeing here comics og kang the conqueror which is presumably who we're going to see in ant-man and the wasp but are they the exact same character i mean it remains to be seen but what do you think well one thing i will say is it saves them doing a superhero or a supervillain origin story <laughs> for when they do introduce them in a movie um and, and one thing i would say as well is that it, it all just depends when the second season comes out because as you say it's going to be a really weird dynamic if you know it's a year or two before season two arrives but then you've already seen tom hiddleston in a couple of movies and you've seen kang in a couple of movies so you kind of feel like yeah. oh you know what? I've, I've had my fill of the character i don't need a second season after all do you know what i yeah. mean like i think that's they, a real worry seem to have sort of a, the production of like a movie and you know that they're usually like a two-year turnaround exactly mate exactly um it'll be intriguing buddy to be honest and and with with loki appearing in in doctor strange 2 and, and I, i'm sure that'll be not the la- that'll not be the last time we see him you know it wouldn't surprise me if, if he's confirmed for thor 4 or another future product down the line like it's tom hiddleston the fans love him it would be silly not to capitalize on that so i'm sure he'll be there in some in some way shape or form and, and as you say like kind the conqueror is was he the villain of ant-man quantumania and i'm sure he'll be in another film so yeah, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be a lot to take in because you know I think someone had someone had said you know even twenty twenty one like it's weekly MCU content pretty much you know, aside from those weeks where you know it's the behind the scenes of one division or things like that you know I mean there's a lot of MCU content and there's always the risk of overkill with those kind of things. Luckily, I'm not experiencing that yet because I actually think the weekly release of the Disney Plus shows is really strong. It's, it's a good sort of it's a good sort of market marketing idea that. Um, but the only thing is, you know, with the by, I think at the end of this year, like there's a lot of films coming out in quick succession. Whereas Black Widow was kind of like, you know, the first film after a year and a half. It's going to be like film after film after film now. So I think there will be yeah. inevitable a bit of burnout, mate. You know, I really do think there will. You know, um, but that yeah, my, my dad said after Black Widow, he just looked at me and said, "I think I'm done. I think I'm done for a while, Callum." Yeah, and I, I'm I was not surprised. Like, like, I don't blame him. I was just like, "Get ready for 2022, Dad. There's there's four coming." I know, I know. Yeah, like it's 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 gonna do, it's gonna be a madness, mate. To be honest, but you know, I'm 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 really excited for it. Still, um, yeah. You know, but um, but yeah, it's all I have to say. I'm just I'm just curious how they how they clean the mess up because obviously, you know. We, we now know that the, every, everybody essentially has free will because there's no one to to prune the branches of the timeline but yeah you know that that obviously means chaos for the for the variants of kang that are gonna 
come and cause this multiversal war. But then you ask, like, how, how, how do you fix that? Do you just genocide every Kang and then problem solved? Because, I mean, you can't <laughs> have, like, Doctor Strange now, you know, genocide all the all the all the all the branch timelines because that means you know by, by, by doing that you know he's, he's getting rid of uh toby mcguire spider-man which i guess this event may have created unless we get a unless we get a different answer by the time spider-man no way home arrives but obviously we can't you know there, there's there's no room really in that in that movie for further answers you know they, this that movie's relying on this to be the definitive answer which is mm-hmm. branch timelines mm-hmm. but then how, how do you fix that because you can't uh, you know make them cease to exist because you know that that would make Don- dr strange a, a huge villain you know on on the on the scale of kang the conqueror i was kind of moving free will once again you know, tell you what Callum, like all this talk it, it kind of worries me for dr strange too because when i think of sam raimi i kind of think you know a more down-to-earth story uh, but not like a universe altering one and with that, you know, it, it doesn't feel like it's going to be a Doctor Strange film whatsoever. It just feels like it's going to be a clusterfuck of absolutely everything. I'm glad. Yeah. I, I hate yeah. Doctor Strange like he's an op-ed. Like, you know, he's, he's yeah. so unpleasant. You know, yeah, I was actually enough. watching Avengers Infinity War and, you know, he's just he's just like, you know, uh, you know, I protect your reality, douchebag. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. And, you know, four, four years ago, you were like dri- driving your car off a cliff because, you know, you were texting and driving like, like he, he just seems so self-righteous and it's not a character that I liked spending time with for two hours. Like everything happening around him was exciting, but any scene he's in, I'm just like, ugh, get over yourself. I'm thinking, mate, for our next Halloween outing, I might go for a Doctor Strange look. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Trying uh, to get yeah, the goatee. You're, you're, you're approaching the facial hair, I guess. Yeah, yeah, I've got that no pet energy as well. You know, I think I think I could pull it off. Um, you're like. I'm, you know, you're you're learning to drive. You can, uh, no, uh, let's let's not even suggest Matthew's a good boy, and no one should ever text and drive. Exactly. Yes, that's our that's the main takeaway from today's show. That is that. Yeah, that's the cautionary tale of Doctor Strange. <laughs> exactly, uh, you yeah. know, but exactly. I mean, he turns into a knobhead just with different interests. True, true that, mate. True that. Um, and any more notes from yourself, mate? Nothing else from me, Matthew. Well, that leads um to the big question, I suppose. You know. I'll, I'll ask you two things. What would you rate this episode out of 10 and then the show in general, where your thoughts lie there? So, um, yeah, take it away, mate. I'd say this is, you know, the second weakest of an incredibly strong series. You know, I, I didn't like how far uh, episode three took us out of the narrative, although it did. I mean, you know, I, th- I, I, I recognize a lot of people would enjoy that because they like the, the Sylvie-Loki uh, relationship, but I uh, do not. So, uh, you know, that, that, you know, spending time developing that was not within my interests of what I liked of the show. And then this episode, you know, for, for finale, you know, there, there were no, there was no action, you know, uh, WandaVision, it was, you know, the, the big fight in the sky, uh, you know, between Agatha and Wanda. And then, you know, we got this introduction to the new Captain America and, you know, some, some of the best, uh, aerial stunts we, we've seen from. Uh, from Sam Wilson in the MCU. Yeah. And here, you know, there's like a like a 30 second, you know, clacking of swords and then, you know, just a, you know, a board meeting. Uh, you know, so I mean it was it was very different to what I expected, you know, give, given the precedent of the series. My my second weakest, but again, amongst a very strong lineup. So I'd st- I'd still give it like an eight out of ten. Uh, you know, because I we we got the we didn't get as many answers as I would have liked, but the ones that we got I was very happy with. Uh and, you know, it makes me optimistic for the future because, of course, you know, different variants of the same character would have wildly different energies. You know, it was just an odd choice to me that the first one they would have, you know, the introduction to this character to Jonathan Majors, because, you know, he's not, he's not a yeah. he's not a huge name. You know, he's, he's sort of a, uh, you know, a, you know, a, a, you know, he, you know, he has Lovecraft Country, which uh, was recently canceled. But, you know, he's, he's, he's not a huge name yet. And I think this franchise will make him a huge name. You know, for his introduction, you know, it sort of sets this weird precedent for, for people to expect him to be that character throughout, even though I, I, I think people who think about it would, would, would realize that's not the case. So we'll, we'll be seeing a very different version. But I, I just thought, weird choice, but, but fair enough. And then the series, I would rank top amongst the three, you know, especially for its level of consistency, because I think, you know, one division starts perfect and then does a real drop off 
and Falcon and Winter Soldier was, you know, it, it, it plateaued like it was it was perfectly fine throughout. But, you know, it never it never went, you know, to great. Uh, but this was sort of, you know, you know, great, great, really good, great, great, really good. So very happy with it. I, I'd rate the whole series nine out of ten, I'd say. Yeah, buddy, I, I think you're smashed there, to be honest with you. I'd have to agree. I think this episode, every episode feels different, which is a really good thing, but it, all, it, it somehow makes it feel consistent, which is a bizarre but, you know, marvellous achievement, to be honest. Um, like you said, it's not action-packed, but I think the the characters all blend together really well. There's some really good, um, it's a really good dialogue in there as well. You know, the, you know John Majors really does give a really good performance, even though the character's not what I would have liked. I think he still did a really excellent job. Um, I think it, you know I would have liked to see you know bit more, have Mobius a bit more to do, um, Renslayer and things like that. But you know I, I get you can't have everything with the final episode. You know it's, but that being said, I think it's a really strong finale. Um, answers some questions, but leaves us on the edge of our seats. Whereas you know it keeps us intrigued for the future of the universe, and you know it, it ultimately will get people to buy into watching Doctor Strange two or Spider Man No Way Home. It, it will get people excited for those films and. No, I, like I said, I have to eat my, eat my words when I said I didn't think these shows would do anything universe altering, which they did. So, you know, fair play. I was wrong there. Um, and yeah, I'd probably have to give it a nine out of 10 as well. And, and I'd, ha- I'd also have to extend that rating to the whole series. Um, I think it's, it's definitely my favorite of the three. I think it's really, really strong. Um, Owen Wilson was, was really, really good. The standout for me, I think, even though I, I really do like Tom Hiddleston, I think this is Tom Hiddleston's best performance as the character, just because he gets a bit more to do. And, you know, obviously he, he shares a lot of the, a lot of the time with, with Owen Wilson and they get on, they got on really well. They blend really nicely. Uh, but yeah, Owen Wilson is, um, is fantastic. I think he's fantastic here. I love him. Um, so yeah, not, not exactly an action packed series, actually. You know what I mean? It's, it, it is quite sort of, um, more of a spectacle rather than stunt work and things like that obviously you know the the character is is granted a few more special abilities in this in this series than we've seen before which is a bit hard to get used to but still um really great easter eggs in there too throughout the series and and ultimately it shocked me it blew me away i had no really excitement or vibes from this show at all and i did uh, end up loving it so it's a nine out of ten for me um it's you know it's it's apparent as as we've discussed from this episode and the, this series as a whole that you know we the people the the general audience who want to keep up with the mcu now i have to watch the tv shows mm. like do you think that's an unreasonable commitment i think disney plus is probably up rivals netflix for me in terms of streaming platforms i think it's really really yeah. good especially with you know extending that out to like 20th century fox projects you know what i mean like it's not just disney movies and star wars and, and marvel you know but i think if it, dep- it just depends. Like if I were just, you know, if I were just a regular movie goer who watched the Avengers films and maybe watched, you know, a few of the Cap movies and Iron Man movies and Thor movies, I'd probably be like, ah, uh, you know, I, I, you'd probably n- could risk not watching this, but I would advise if you want to get the full experience of the universe and really want to, you know, invest your time and do it, definitely watch it. It's, it's you know, it's not a waste of time or anything, but in terms of do you think it's like, it's fair it just depends. Like I, I, I don't think the, I don't think the MCU has ever marketed itself towards either the casual moviegoers nor the diehard comic book fans. Like I think it does perfect both perfectly well in the middle. Do you know what I mean? So it just depends. Like I think if you're a casual moviegoer, you could ultimately not watch this, but still, you know, get the just desserts and still really enjoy the future projects without watching this one. But at the same time, I think if you're a diehard comic book fan and MCU fan, if you watch this you'll experience the same thing like you'll still end up loving the project nonetheless so i think it works but i just wouldn't want to see every major mcu plot point good plot points and stuff like go down this way like if everything if every sort of infinity saga or multiverse saga went down the the disney plus show route or, or the netflix show route or for example i'm probably thinking okay taking the piss of it here like you know you know what i mean like just keep it for the films yeah. it just depends mate like i don't really care because i'll watch it anyway i'm a sucker like i just i'm a sucker of that kind of stuff but um, yeah but yeah how do you feel yeah i sort of liked it you know in this sort of I, I would say my favorite handling of it uh was boy falcon and winter soldier where it's their personal journey that's a yeah. big deal for them so mm-hmm. you know 
uh, you know, we get the added context having watched it of, you know, where Sam Wilson's uh, mind is at, you know, when, when we see him returning Captain America 4. I think you're right. Uh, you know, but you could probably bullet point to someone, you know, everything they need to know about one division fucking with your soldier. But I think they need to watch Loki, you know, so yeah, I'm, I'm conflicted about it. I think it's an unreasonable commitment to say, yeah, you have to watch, you know, four movies a year and, you know, six TV shows, a, you know, a year yeah. to, to, to keep up. You know, I think, I think it's unreasonable, especially for, you know, adults who work full time, you know, like, like yourself, you know, I, I think, I think it's, I think, I do think it's unreasonable. You know, no matter how well the story, uh, the storytelling is handled, you know, I think patience is 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 key. You know, I I like the idea of you know getting constant content because I I hope I won't get sick of it. Uh, but you know, I know people will get sick of it, and I know some people just won't have time for it. Yeah, you know, I think that's a really good point because I think the personal journeys, I, I you know, I I think they're just equally as important as the universe altering stuff. So. Uh, I, I would like if the MCU went down that road with the shows. It's weird because all the shows do different things. One division is kind of a mix of the two, where it's like, you know, you've got your personal journeys, but you've also got sort of implications for the wider universe, or as Falcon and Winter Soldier neglects the wider implications and focuses in the, uh, focuses in the personal journeys, whereas Loki does the exact opposite and does none of the personal journeys, but all of the universe stuff, if you get me. So it is weird. Um you know, I just, I think, I think my mind will be a bit clearer on that, you know, after Hawkeye and She-Hulk and Miss Marvel and Armor Wars and stuff. Um, I, I think, because then I think it's a bit, maybe a bit, it's a bit early days still, because, you know, we don't know how this whole multiverse saga is going to go down, if that's what they're even calling it. Um, you know, so I think by the end of the year, especially after Spider-Man and, you know, after the end of next year with Doctor Strange, we'll have a clearer vision of where we're going because it's still a bit unknown at the minute, mate. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's still, there's still been no trailers for Spider-Man, which is mental to me, given that it comes out in, like, yeah. five months. Do you know what I mean? That is crazy. We're, we're recording this on Thursday, and Friday is, uh, you know, a, a big day for trailers. So we, we, we may see it Friday and Monday, I'd say, are the, the two most common. So, I mean, it could be any time now. Might do, mate, yeah um but i suppose on i mean i'm not sure this is podcast length but is but if it is this is our 99th episode uh so um next one will be our 100th so um, as we we're kind of saying on the channel we're doing like a little get to know us q a type thing um mix, mixed with a lot of we've got a lot of sort of special stuff planned and um, which hopefully you guys will enjoy um i know calm's been sort of working on a few ideas too so i'm, I'm really excited to sort of do that one um to be honest i'm not sure where i don't know if we'll, we'll end up doing that in this in our, you know in person again like we did with our christmas special you know it's a, i don't think we've really talked about it but i would definitely be open to doing that mate if you're cool with it um yeah. but yeah um thank you very much guys for for watching our loki series as, as i say you know our loki playlist is there with all our reviews as is our one division and falcon and winter soldier one um yeah thanks very much calm for today i, I appreciate thank your you. time apologies for yours for my lagginess i think you know it got it got a little bit better. I think it's not too bad now. Hopefully, yeah. I, th I think anytime we had any issues, uh, you, you were you were uh, it, it was it was mostly when I was talking or or when we cut. So I you know I, okay. I don't think I don't think it ended cool. up being too bad. Sweet and yeah, stay tuned on the channel for uh, a few good reviews hopefully coming up and and of course our hundredth episode of the podcast, which will be exciting. So yeah, um, hope you guys are all well. Be family and friends. I'll see you tomorrow too. Take care and uh, bye bye. Bye bye.